Before we understand how you become a master, we first have to understand what mastery really is. Because mastery is something that needs to be defined. It resists definition, yet can be instantly recognized and it comes in many varieties, yet follows certain unchanging laws. It brings rich rewards, yet it is not a really a goal or a destination. It's more like a process, a journey, the right to cause this journey, mastery. Examples of mastery are Usain Bolt, who runs the fastest of everyone, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who is one of the best strikers in the world, but also a good mother who takes care of their children in the best possible way, and in our case, a businessman who strives to be a billionaire. Mastery is the climb, it's the run, mastery is where it's all about. We are trying to master the game of wealth physical, mental, social and of course material wealth. From this book and the other mastery book of Robert Greene comes our YouTube name. Run for Millionaire comes from Wealth Mastery. We believe that mastery is the path to fulfillment but also the path to wealth. And as a society we tend to believe that it requires a special ticket available only to those born with exceptional abilities. The key word here is born. We think that abilities are born. And I want to say to you that it is false. It's an excuse for not making it. Don't you see that? Disabilities are born, I believe that. But even then, it's not an excuse for not trying. Take for example Nick Vergesic. He was born with no arms and legs and he does amazing things. He can get up when he lays down on the ground with no arms and legs. Well, you must try that once, but it's very difficult. And he does much more amazing things. He's even a public speaker. He's absolutely an inspiring guy. If you haven't got any disabilities, that means that you can be your potential of your abilities. The potential of your abilities. The only thing you need to do is become a master in your craft. Because mastery isn't reserved for the super talented or even for those who are fortunate enough to have gotten an early start. It's available to anyone who is willing to get on the path and stay on it regardless of age, sex or previous experience. So rule number one is mastery is for those who really want it. But it sounds if mastery is really easy and if something is not easy, it is mastery. Because mastery means of course that you become a master in your craft. And for this you need to put in the time, put in the grey hairs, get some stress out of it, but still keep going and going. It is putting in hours and hours. And what scientists say is put 10,000 hours in it. This is the Pareto rule, aka the 10,000 hour rule. And of course, this is hard and it's a struggle, so you could say this mastery is a pain. But it's a short-term pain for long-term pleasure or rewards. And the most beautiful thing is, it will never end. Because mastery is not reachable. You just can't hit it. You come close, but you can't hit it, says the author. And this is not bad. This is just the fact that you need to accept. Because if you won't see the truth in here, you won't make it. Therefore I want to tell you the truth about mastery. It is hard, it is painful and you need to suffer. But if you want success, you need to grow through the pain and become better and wiser along the way. So rule number two is mastery is a pain. For mastering your craft to attain the level of mastery, you need to put in the work, as I said earlier. Grinding and putting in the work. That's what you need to do. It's no secret, it's just the most simple advice that I can give you. It's another word that not many people want to hear. But the word is work. You need to work as hard as you can. 
Gary Vaynerchuk talks about hustle, this was the only thing that differentiates you from the rest, outworking someone. That's real, he says. In the book, the author calls this practice. To practice in this sense implies something separate from the rest of your life. You practice in order to learn a skill, in order to improve yourself, in order to get ahead, achieve goals and make money. This way of thinking about practice is useful in our society. You obviously have to practice to get to Garnicky Hell, he says. Practice is just the path upon which you travel, just that. But there's a little secret about work. The people we know as masters don't devote themselves to their particular skill just to get better at it. The truth is, they love to practice. And because of this, they do get better. They love grinding on the plateau. And then to complete the circle, the better they get, the more they enjoy performing the basic habits over and over again. To practice regularly, even when you seem to be getting nowhere, might at first seem onerous. But the day eventually comes when practicing becomes a treasured part of your life. The author says this beautifully, and I quote, you settle into it as if into your favorite easy chair, unaware of time and the turbulence of the world. It will still be there for you tomorrow. It will never go away. This habitual practice is the path of mastery. If you stay on it long enough, you will find it to be your favorite place with its ups and downs its challenges and comfort, its surprises, disappointments and unconditional joys. You will take your share of bumps and bruises while traveling, bruises of the ego as well as of the body, mind and spirit, but it might well turn out to be the most reliable thing to do in your life. This path might eventually make you a winner in your chosen field. And you will be thankful and proud that you chose this path of lifelong learning. So rule number three is habitual practice lets you win in your chosen field. To summarize, mastery is for those who really want it, mastery is a pain, and habitual practice lets you win in your chosen field. Thank you for watching, and as always, get your ass into action.